start stream on there. It should be as requested. How the hell are you going to do a key exchange over a socket? I'm not going to do HTTPS, I do HTTP. Is that going to be an issue then? What do you mean? I mean, that, that means you, I don't know, did we ever have an, a Nationals? Didn't they have to? Uh, I don't know. They, they use, they use, they use 80. 80, but I'm yeah. saying is, would it be better better to use? Do we have scored 80 or did we only score 4.3? Outbound was scored 80. Mm -hmm. Should we close the door? I don't know. Okay. Do you preserve this room or do we just stay I do. Okay, okay you actually, do. Yeah. I did only for an hour. I probably should have done like two. We'll see. Oh, some people are lost. I'll wait for them. I would just reserve for six hours and then just see if anyone notices. <laughs> well, they have to get approved. <laughs> exactly. Who's going to say no? Well, that's the point. Like, I would reserve it from now until like four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be curious. I want to know if somebody like actually like looks at this and like, is this valid or they're just like, check, check, check. I don't care. That's like uh, some of the RAs when they do rounds. I know one of them, uh, he put, I couldn't do rounds in courtyard because it's a rectangle, not a circuit. <laughs> <laughs> just additional notes. Normally no one cares until, for, for like anything at all, until, you know, Eric finds you Rickrolling Evan. VMs and then they probably don't care unless you're asked. conflicting with another thing. Like, That's the point. Yeah. Like the whole point of it is just to like make sure that it's yeah. like if somebody has a claim to it, then they have a rightful claim to it. So if you sign it up from you know two p.m. to four a.m., then you have that time slot. Yeah, that's that's the question. So I want Nick. That's you need to do that for next week. Well, I already I can't do it. Because it's on a recurring oh, no. thing, so I can't just like Start a switch it up. <laughs> so here's a, here's a question: When does that like take effect? Like, do you just do you just have you claimed it for like the rest of the year? Rest of the semester, yeah. You can't do it. You can't do it for the full year. Okay, but you're sure it's claimed for the rest of the semester versus yeah. like somebody can't like steal it on December because it only does it. Every I would time. imagine that they would only be able to do that if they were like higher up. Oh, but 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 the assumption is that you actually did. You you reserved all those time slots now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's not like in a week you'll reserve an extra. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for creating the snapshot, do, is that going to be at the IA lab level or like internal have a snapshot? What are we doing? For what context? Uh, the thing tonight it says. I thought that said. Oh, that's the micro mock. That's the micro mock. That's that's not our. Yeah, that's my bad. Yeah. I think that's Peter. That's more Peter Prom if that was. I snapshotted them all. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, I had some. Free you snapshot all the broken ones. No. Oh no, two didn't get used. Two didn't get used last time. Though. Ooh. Okay. That could be an issue. I don't know how many people are going to have this time. Are you going to mess with them then? Yeah. Do you have scripts ready to go? No. That's what I'm doing tomorrow. Okay. What time is that at on Sunday? I don't know if we decide. It's on Sunday? No, it's, oh, it's on Friday. It's Friday. <laughs> there are too many things. Or I'm, I'm sorry, I was talking about thinking of the... Uh, the actual one? The actual, yeah. That's uh, probably going to be at 4 to 8 again like My last time. My extension broke. I'm sad. How did this happen? Yeah. This looks like it's at 6 tomorrow is the microphone. Oh, no, it just got turned off. Who turned off my workspace grid? No, no, Nick. They're not in the grid anymore. I just don't have a giant line. <laughs> no, please. Okay, so we are waiting on one person. I don't wait on Eric, but I guess if he doesn't show up in one minute, I'm going to go. What did you guys cover last week? Uh, Juniper. Okay. So, so some networking stuff. We're probably gonna try to alternate. Yeah, this basically becomes Impossible. Linux and networking because Windows is just terrible. And yeah, I don't know Windows, and none of the Windows people know networking. So <laughs> this is what we're doing. Okay, let's get going then. Okay. So web application firewalls. That's what we're talking about today. So it's gonna come in two parts. First, we're gonna do a quick and dirty mod security web application firewall. That's the type of thing you might do at like a CCDC style competition where you just want to get something up really fast. Um, basically, the, you're pulling stuff from the like the Ubuntu or Debian repos or whatever. So uh, it's not going to be up to date, but it'll it'll be good enough probably. Um, then in part two, we're going to talk doing a reverse proxy and compiling mod security from source. So you'll have a more up to date version of mod security, but it takes longer to do. So that's better for like your long-term competitions, like the Cyberforce one that's coming up in December and like ICH next semester. 
And then the reverse proxy is a really useful way to cut down on all the work you have to do. So if you have like multiple web servers, you only have to put mod security on one instead of putting them on like three or four. The issue with that is you have like that single point of failure. So you really only want to do that on a system that you know to be clean. So in these long form competitions like uh, Ice Age and uh, Cyberforce, you can actually build your own VMs from ISOs. So you don't have to worry about someone having messed with it beforehand. But in like CCDC, this would be kind of dangerous because if you put the reverse proxy on a system that's been running, uh, Red Team very, fairly likely has something on it already. And so they could just nuke all of your um, that piece of infrastructure, which would cut off access to all those web servers. So first, how does a web application firewall work? So basically, on a normal web server, we have this application layer. So that's your Apache running whatever thing you have, like a PHP app, like Joomla or Magento or something like that. And so your clients will come in with their normal requests. They'll get through, and they'll talk to your application server. And then say an attacker comes in, tries to do SQL injection on your application. Normally, that would go through, and you'd get SQL injection. That's bad. But then the web application firewall, what it does is it detects, um, it basically does like a signature. So it, check, it detects that that, uh, is that, that message in the HTTP request is trying to do SQL injection, and it'll, it'll just cut it off. Um, so that'll block basically 90% of what goes on that a red teamer will try to like actually exploit an application with. Um, if they do like custom stuff, this probably won't catch it because it's all signature based. But uh, most of what they do will get will get cut off. And the nice thing about this too is that um, if they get like a PHP shell, it'll actually it'll sometimes detect that they're sending like they're trying to cat Etsy password or something like that, and it'll just drop that request. And so their session will get really really crappy, which is kind of nice for annoying red team. So this is an example of kind of what it looks like in the back end. So this is a rule from the mod security community rule set, which tries to detect like comments in SQL commands. So it'll try to see like, oh, I'm trying to match on this uh, piece of data here. So it's got this really big, ugly regex, which tries to match on that. And so it'll try to capture all of this stuff. But obviously, if you do something that doesn't match this rule, it can get through. So it's not foolproof. So let's do it. So you're going to jump into the V app. And we're going to be on web server one. Actually, first, just to demonstrate that we're vulnerable, let's go jump on the client. Open up our web browser. Go to 192.168.1.2. We get to the damn vulnerable web app login page. So the credentials for this are admin and password, all lowercase. We don't have any markers. Behind your laptop screen. Ironically, yes. Yeah. Ah. So by default, you should be on low security. So if we go to like the command injection page, this you're normally supposed to like type in an IP address and it'll ping it for you. But instead, if we type semicolon ls, it'll end that command and then do the ls command. So that's something you don't want to happen. And then if we jump over to SQL injection, if you type single quote or one equals one, it'll dump all the um, usernames and uh, all the users in the users table for this. So these are things we don't want. So we're going to jump over to our web server one. Oh yeah, I forgot. I should show you the lab. Oops. Oh, I did open the right one. Okay, 
So I posted the link to the lab in DevSec. So if, in that, if you open that up, you'll see uh, basically an overview of what we're going to do today. And then uh, up at the top, we got some resources like last time. So you can look at this link up here, it has a link to the documentation book. If it'll open, I guess not. Oops, it's doing that stupid thing again. As if you do get, if you do fall behind, you don't know, say something. Yeah, we, so actually have to we got a small group so we can help each other. Wait on people, so. Yeah. That sucks. Oops. Yeah, so we gotta talk to Eric about that. About what? <laughs> the the session screen like refreshing constantly. Oh yeah, that's annoying. I should share that too. Yeah. Uh, scroll back up here. Okay, so like way down on page one twenty eight of the documentation book, I have some guides for installing mod security. And then if you scroll down even further to one thirty, I have a guide for setting up an Apache reverse proxy. So you can reference that if you want, otherwise you can just follow along. Um, if you fall behind, or really just need to like look at the actual commands and I'm moving and I uh, like scroll past them or something, there's that second link. It has all of the commands that I'm looking at and copying, so you can just use that too. Assuming uh, Michael doesn't um, destroy them. Okay. okay, now we can get started. So we're on web server one. Login is root, password one bang. So first thing we're gonna do is just install the Apache uh, the mod secure the Apache mod secure the mod security Apache module. I'll try. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Let me scroll down slightly. What's the default login? Root and then password one bang, capital P. Password one exclamation point. So the module is called lib apache2 mod security2. And this is something I discovered recently is that there is a, um, a package for the community rule set. So an issue I was having last year was that I would install like the Apache mod security module from uh, the lab from the repos, and then I would download the community rule set um, from the GitHub, and then the community rule set would be updated for a later version of mod security, and then they wouldn't work together. But it's kind of nice they have this. They're just gonna be a little bit out of date. Yeah, we'll see if this works. Works for me earlier today. Is everyone else is working? No, my no, phone too, but <laughs> that's not should be able to type or something. Well, oh, you know what? I bet you have to get a authentic with Captain Porter. Well, yeah. yeah, you asked. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I did that earlier today. I forgot. Yeah, that was yeah. Go to the client machine. Go to like Google, so you can authenticate with with Captain Portal. I think it might be VMware Tools. Might be. Uh, well, the VM, at least VMware Tools is spam the log like. No one else ever did. Which reminds me, you know, next set of base machines, there will be a script on every box. You should leave the IP change script there too. Yeah. Oh, because that's Which IP change? Just like change it to whatever you want. No. That's good. Ah, uh, go to your client machine. Yeah, go go to your Ubuntu box and then just type in a website. Go to like Google.com or something. I can't do Google, remember? It sometimes works for me. Just go to something weird. ASDF.com. It did pop up for me, but I went back and tried again. Oh. ASDF.com. Wow. I'm mm -hmm. impressed. Yeah, Cody always calls it CNN. Always tells us CNN. Yeah. Eric said weather.com, but that failed for me once. What exactly did that do? Um, did it actually go through? Yeah. Oh. 
Try go. Did you go to Google or somewhere else? Well, I did Google, then I went to Reddit. It's posted mm. okay. captive portal, so we should just sign in. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I didn't have it. Well, it just weird that it didn't. Oh, nobody had that issue? Can you actually like download yeah, something? Yeah, like the captive portal didn't show up, but it was downloadable. That's not a good sign. <laughs> It's not supposed to happen, but I guess we can keep going then. Well, and, well uh, no, because I don't. Th can you guys download it from the other box? He said he got Logan said. Yeah, that's oh. a tab back in our Okay, you're good. Okay. Order, okay. So. okay. That's I guess we'll keep going. Okay, so another thing you need to do after that is to enable an Apache module. So you do that with A2EN mod. Uh, headers. Uh, oh, wait, header. Wait, no, I did it. I did it right the first time. It's headers. Oh, gosh, you're right. It, no, you're right. It's true. It's wow, headers. Eric, you can't. Wow, okay. Can't that's that's not good. It. It's headers with an S. So um, what that does is it allows Apache to rewrite um, header, like HTTP headers. Because what it's going to want to do is that when a request comes in with like some bad stuff in it, it's going to give them a 403. So it needs to be able to um, basically insert that header response back. So once that's done, you can cd into Etsy mod security. This was just installed. And we're going to copy the uh, default config to one that actually works. Oops. And then we're going to edit it. So way up at the top here, we got this um, setting called Sec Rule Engine. Right now, it's set to detect only. That tells Mod Security whether it should do nothing, um, detect attacks, or um, block attacks. So this is basically like an IDS. So you can set it into like detect mode or prevent mode. So we're gonna go next. We're gonna change detect only to uh, on. Write that, and then way down at the bottom. We're going to include our rules from the community rule set. It's going to be includes user share mod security CRS star conf and user share mod security dash CRS uh, base underscore rules slash star conf. Um, there are some extra rules in user share mod security dash CRS slash optional underscore rules. Uh, that you can enable depending on your application. Um, the way I don't know if it's on the on the DVWA side or the, with Apache, but um, by default, uh, with either one of those anyway, it doesn't set the X frame headers X frame options header, and that one of the rules in the optional uh, rule set will actually block any request that comes to the web server because of that. So we're only going to do base rules for now. So once you're done with that, you can service Apache 2, restart. Oops. So anyone massively down at this point? No. Um, and we're done. Oh. Oh. Man. Uh, yeah. Once you once you restart Apache, um, you can check in. You can tail var log Apache two error logs, and it should show mod security loading. Uh, and you might want to look like right by and see if there's anything that like the mess up. Same directory. You're just gonna mess with mod security dot com. Yeah, recommend it. Just mod security dot com. Uh, the rash. Yeah, no, no, yeah, that was right. You gotta uh, source source destination. Just a quick check. It's more useful on the when you compile it because you can forget some stuff sometimes. Yeah, 
missing output when I restarted it? Or? No. So, nope. Okay. Yeah, Sometimes. I guess if you don't, does this have system CTL? No, no output is only good output if you're restarting the battery. It will yell at you if it dies. Okay. Um, yeah, system you, CTL. Well, normally they're aliased either way. This is your Ubuntu 14. Yeah, I thought system CTL uh, I think would. We actually do a system D at this point, yeah. Yeah, I thought system CTL would uh, output like whether it was starting properly or not. But yeah. What's, what's the tail command? Uh, tail takes the last like oh, n number okay. of lines. You'd actually want to use what journal? Well, you, I mean, you could do status, or you could do journal CTO dash u and then the name of the. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep, you can. can. Or is this like work through system? I think you're using system D, right? You mean syslog? No, no, no. That journal CTO. Well. Well, that would tell me if Apache failed to start, right? Oh yeah. Not whether mod security loaded properly. Because sometimes, like when you do, when you install from source, if you forget to enable a module, it'll tell you and that's one line down the bottom. Minus. It's kind of crazy. But now we can actually test it properly. If you do a curl localhost and do like a cmd, no, no, cat plus slash etc password, should get like a 403 forbidden page. So that's what mod security throws back at you whenever you try to exploit something <laughs> that it can detect. And now for the real test, we can jump over to the client machine. All right. Another thing that's in the, the uh, base rules is that it will block any connection that tries to use an IP address as a host name. So you can use web1.server. That is in the host file. Is there a way to change that, or is that just default? Uh, it's, you can change it. It is default. So if you basically what happens, uh, let me show you. Because yeah, actually that matters a lot, depending on the competition. Depends, yeah. So if you go into, if you tail Apache, I think it's, yeah, modsec audit.log, it'll show you, like, I blocked this request. Um, let me just less it. Unfortunately, the way it logs stuff is really weird. It's not like syslog, which is annoying. Uh, so pattern match on that rule, which is... So you can see right here we have like the file that the rule is in, and then the line is number 205. Okay. So if you go into that uh, rule set, you might as well do that right now. Yeah. So if you go into user share mod security dash CRS base rules, security CRS underscore 40. Generic attacks.com. That's weird. Oh, I'm in the wrong thing. Exit, please. Okay. So I'm in the file, and I'm going to go to line 205. And here we have the rule. Oops. Scroll up slightly. So it was 40, the American tax? Maybe I did it wrong. Uh, well, you know what? I think I was, I was looking at the wrong rule there. I think that was matching. Yeah, that was matching the cat Etsy password. That's a different yeah, file. Uh, there should be a simpler option, though, to be honest. There we go. What do you mean? It's just in the comp file. You don't need a simpler option in the comp file. Mod security, because you're modifying the actual rule in the rule set. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think there is. You don't like that? No. Might be some. I don't know. Maybe there's. Um, so that's in actually twenty one protocol anomalies. That's on line ninety eight. Okay. So here's the actual thing. So here we see the rule logic. This rule triggers if the host header contains all digits. So this is blocking if it's just an IP address. So we just comment out all of these lines. I think it's just one line. Yeah. So you comment out that line. You write it. What was the file? Oops. People can miss that. It was, uh, what was the new method? 21. Okay. 21 protocol anomalies. Yep. And once you've done that, you can restart Apache. Oh, it's not a base rules. Where is it? It is in base rules. Oh, it's in base rules. Oh, that's fine. Okay. 
It's on line 98. I want to search. You should be able to find the ID somewhere. Yeah, there we go. Never mind. It's just ID 960017. Now if we go back to the client, should be able to go just the IP address. And then if we try to do any like command injection like we did last time, we'll get blocked. So forbidden 403. And it'll catch us on the SQL injection too. So that's a really quick way to do it. Um, like in theory, you could probably do that in like under five minutes, which is pretty good for um, like a web server. Uh, I should have put like some backdoors on here just to test them, but maybe if we have time at the end, I'll try doing that. Um, so let's talk about reverse proxies. So this is how a reverse proxy works. So if you have like a regular proxy, you know, you like put all your requests to it and then, um, basically take your requests and then forward them on to whatever web server you're trying to go to. That's how like a forward proxy works. In a reverse proxy, what happens is like you try to go to a web server and uh, like you go to like a domain name like webserver2.com or something, uh, webserver1.com, you'll get forwarded to the same IP address for DNS. You'll send your request in here. It'll detect through the host field that you're trying to go to web server one or web server two. And then it'll redirect your request to the proper web server. They'll send the response back to the proxy server, which will send it back to you. So basically you're controlling that traffic that's going in and out. You're doing like a man in the middle between them. So if we have a WAF along with this, if an attacker tries to come in and do an attack on web one or web two, They'll get blocked at the central point at this WAF, and only good requests will be able to be proxy through. So you can imagine, like, if we scale this up, we have like four web servers or five web servers. We could have them all behind this one proxy server, which is running this WAF. So we only have to set up mod security once. There's only one place with our rules on them. There's only one place where we have to look at our logs. Um, they're not spread out across all those web servers. It simplifies a lot. So this is like a really good thing to do in those long form competitions. And interestingly, you can also do like HTTPS stuff too. So if you put like all your pen, like your key files on the, on the proxy server, it can actually do the HTTPS stuff up at this front end rather than doing it way in the back. So let's do that now. So we're going to jump on to reverse proxy. Once again, it's root password run bang. And I typed it wrong. So uh, we're going to install Apache. Apache 2 and libapache2 mod dash proxy dash HTML. So what we really want to do is install mod proxy mod HTTP and uh, yeah mod proxy and mod HTTP and proxy HTML but those are all dependent on a, a mod proxy HTML so they'll all get caught when we install like this. Okay awesome. Here's there we go. Time. Yeah, hmm. Wait, really? Oh, wow, weird stuff is happening. 
weird and weird stuff is happening. Same thing as it, as before. Just go to somewhere and go go back and try again and it works. Like this is Palo is being really weird. I don't don't do Google. Do something that's not Google. Because Google, I don't think it even goes through the off if you try Google. You know, something like this happened to me yesterday. As on, not like here, but on my like local network, where um, I have like my Pi on a static IP address, and then my desktop computer got a DHCP address with the same IP, that IP conflict. So it was when I was trying to stream stuff off my Pi through my NAS, okay. like it would just stutter and stop like every five minutes. Yeah. I wonder if this is similar. That's but they shouldn't have duplicate IP. What are what are they getting? At, what is your PS one getting IPs off of DHCP? Yeah. Off of vCloud Internet. Mm -hmm. Okay, that shouldn't be happening. That right? I wonder if it's a they don't Mac have addresses Macs, should. Right? Yeah, they should have different Macs. Let's check. I I'd be actually interested to yeah if we can compare quick here. Oh no, do 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 it the real way. Come on. What do you mean? Pop a shell. Oh, yeah. this is like more foolproof, right? Not necessarily. 75 EF. Which interface is it? Extra. EM0. EM0, yeah. Different. Uh, what's that? Well, the first, of course, I checked the first three octets first. They're different. At least it claims it's different internal. Yeah. Maybe someone's spoofing the, uh, well, I mean, you can... the Palo's IP address. <laughs> They like set there. Or that could have. Or Eric screwing with the network right now. Might be, yeah. Now let's try. Just try it again. Still broken. Ooh, that's funny. Mine's not. Oh. Can't you normally do that from behind? No. Like, just try it straight and it's like, oh. no, Normally DNS gets passed through. Yeah. That works. Okay, yeah. So you are being Captain Portal. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's, just, that's exactly what that is. It, do, it does that too, by the way. Yeah, because it redirects you and curl doesn't show you that right away. Yep. Why is this not... I don't know anything else. Go to CNN.com. But Cody always tells me. I don't know why it works. It doesn't? <laughs> what? It doesn't work? I'll try, I don't know, try after one more time. I mean, you're... Well, so no, this is all behind the PF, right? There's nothing super weird. This is behind the PF. Oh, this is not. this one show here. Okay, so I can get to Google. I can't get to the repos. Yeah, I'll try it. Wait, this is weird because. Okay. Maybe the repos broken. The repos. Well, mine mine worked, but so the repos are internal. Yeah. Are they resolving? Are repos resolving yet? Uh, I think they are. Or I think I'll tell you that. Uh, Let's just see. Yeah, they're resolving. Hmm. That works this time. Okay. Let's see that work. Yeah. I misspelled it. That, that's always helpful. And that works. But I just can't update the repos for some reason. Nope. No, it's broken. No, it's broken. <laughs> that's not good. You want here? Here, you, I'll fix it for you. Maybe. I'll share with you. Share. Share with you. Is there any chance it broke? Because like we all tried to access it at once. I mean, no. <laughs> if, if we can knock down the <laughs> island of the repos with that, um, that didn't screwed up real bad. <laughs> Not so they're knocked down, but it's like a filter or whatever to prevent too many connections from coming in, just like drops. Yeah, it, it's it's the ah, crap. What what's your? Oh, that could be it. My lease expires in negative four hours. <laughs> what the heck? What's your what's your username? I keep forgetting. Uh, just type mewschmuck m e w s. Don't have to do the first. Yeah, thing. it's because I keep I don't know what I want. Or just type a hyphen. There'll probably not very many people. <laughs> that would probably do. That might be actually interesting. Now, okay, well you share it now. I'm use mine. Reset leases. That should not be. The, yeah, how does that. Thanks, I allow. You're, you're, you're got a lot of problems. Your lease expires in zero hours. Oh, wow, I'm so good. That doesn't even make any sense. I did this like. Maybe that's just your client broken. My lease yeah. doesn't expire until 11.38 p.m. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, that's probably part of it. <laughs> that makes sense. Whose clock says what? Mine does. Because it dual boot and then Windows doesn't pick up at the time. What do you mean it's Windows? Is, I've never had that issue with I've had that issue all the time. Set it to network time. What are you doing? I do, but then it doesn't update. It doesn't update every time it up. <laughs> I just I manually tell it to update and I don't use Windows. <laughs> uh, yeah. You can do OBS on Linux. What, 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 what are you wrong? I told you this last time. Or did you have to I, it, It's broken because it can't. you can't do screen recording. But you can do like window recording. I have to figure that out. Oh. Sometime. I thought I... Okay. Okay. Oh, you already did it. Okay. Of course I did. Yeah. Uh, okay, so then this is really simple. So you go to Etsy Apache 2 slash sites dash enabled 00 dash default.conf. And we're just going to get rid of all this. Then you're going to put in virtual host. You should tell them these keyboard shortcuts. I don't think anyone's using Vim except me, right? Who's using Vim? Vim's not on Or VI, at least. <laughs> See, I told you. Okay. <laughs> but even if they did it in nano, I don't know how they would have managed to do that in nano. Control K. Just hold it. Okay. I, I don't think people know that shortcut either. Let me spell that. Who, who deleted it the slow it's, way? It tells you at the bottom. Raise your hands. You want to shame me. Okay, so you're going to do proxy preserve host on. This isn't super important for what we're doing, but if you had like an HTTPS site, let me scroll in. Uh, like if you have an HTTPS site, um, if you don't use the proxy preserve host, um, the, pro the reverse proxy will use the like IP address of your backend server in its requests. Which if you have like if you have HTTPS enabled, it's probably not going to work because your certificate is going to be on the domain name instead. So that's why you use the preserve host part. So you keep that uh, host name. Then we're going to do server name. It's going to be web2.server. What server name does is it allows Apache to differentiate. Um, it can, you can, so you can do different configs for different domain names. So this virtual host is just going to be for web2.server. And then we're going to create another one for web3.server. Then we do the actual proxy. So it's going to be proxy pass space slash HTTP 192.168.1.4. Make sure you have the slashes in there. Because basically what Apache will do is it'll take everything that comes after the slash and then it requests to this server. And then it'll append it to this and send the request to the backend server. So if you forget a slash here, then you'll just have like a bunch of junk and that concatenated with your IP address and it's not going to know where to go. And then finally, we're going to do proxy pass reverse. Oh, that shouldn't have been. That should be HTTP, not HTTPS. Sorry. Um, so basically, the proxy pass grabs stuff going inbound, and then proxy pass reverse modifies things going outbound. So when your backend server responds to a request, it'll say in like it's a, I think it's like in the host field. It might be in a different place. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it'll basically say, here's how you get how you talk back to me again. And it'll give its IP address, but you want to replace it with your uh, host name, with your domain name up there. So with that proxy pass reverse, we'll replace that stuff in there. And then you can copy all the stuff in here. Oops. What the heck? Why does that not work? There we go. So we just copy and paste it. We're going to do the same thing but for Web Server 3. So you basically take the same config, you're going to modify the server name to Web 3. You're going to modify the IP address to be .5 instead of .4. Why don't I share this with you in case you can get it to work? Sure.
Unless my entire system is broken. There we go. Well, as long as the other session. Share. What's he doing? I think he's technically doing cyber ops. Hmm. I don't expect much of him at the moment. No, it's not. It's not really. A terrible brother. I'm not a brother. Probably my cousin. Cousin. Uh, yeah, he's probably watching the live stream. <laughs> uh, let's go back here. Okay. So once he got all that done. <coughs> Should be able to save that. Service Apache two restart. Oh no! Uh, proxy preserve host. Yeah. That's right. Host or hosts? Host should be. Well, it doesn't like it. Unless I jack something. Oh, up you know what? I forgot to enable the modules. Oh, uh, that's that could be problem. <laughs> that would do. So you gotta do a two en mod proxy proxy underscore http proxy underscore html xml two encoding xml two enc. So that's kind of an annoying thing. Sometimes when you install a module, it'll enable it automatically for you. Sometimes they don't. So you gotta watch out for that. So once you do that, then Apache should restart properly. And then we can jump over to the client machine. What was that? You have to do to get it to restart? Oh, that's wrong. Uh, you have to enable these modules. This is insanely weird. So I'm getting kept photo blocked on one but not the other. Hmm. That shouldn't be possible. No. You set a pro there's not a proxy running this thing, is there? Why would kept a portal block the repos? It's not blocking the repos. I mean, it is blocking the repos, it's not blocking Google. So we got outbound access, but not internal to like the cloud internet. No, well, you no, you're getting captive portal blocked. To well, repos? Not. To, I don't. I don't know if captive portal blocks repos or not. For all I know, it does. I was able to get to. Oh, well, maybe I was getting captive portal blocked. I don't. I don't trust the config current configuration. That might not have actually been Google. Okay. Has everyone got this done? Yep. Cool. So let's jump over to the client machine. Should we will go to uh, web one web two dot server, and you should get another damn vulnerable web app page. If you go to slash id, it'll tell you the actual id of the web server, because this uh, domain is resolving to the same IP address as this one does. If you go to web three, you should get web server three in the id page. Works now. Hmm. I If anybody else has oh, the Airbnb, you, add, you so added one or not the other. As which one? Uh, if you just have g generic, so uh, if you can't hit the repos, connection error, to tell me. Yeah, it's supposed to be a fake, but I don't think I've heard it before. What, two has repo problems? Just add all of them. Yeah, so we basically got two different configs for each of the websites. 
Well, no, oh, yeah, that's okay. I'm learning that. So. Yeah. Nice. All right, let's go look at your config files. Slowly but surely. Config files. On the reverse file. Because if you can get to those two servers, then you can get the other one. Unless Nick can use it, we definitely wasn't paying you. Not today, but then this is a new jacket. That should not be flashes. Yeah. Yeah, that would do. Oh, yeah. One slash four slash. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. We don't we don't um, use dots anymore for IP addresses. We just use four slashes now. Like um, regular expressions. Mm -hmm. But but why not though? See, like, there's there's no there. reason we should be using dots. It's arbitrary. Yeah. I ran the A2N mod line and I still can't get the Apache to restart. That tail of our Lexus one. Go say no to that. Uh, tail it. Do you know the HTML file interface manually refreshes? It does. It does? Okay. Yeah, yeah bar slash log, because I just want to yell at Eric and then have him tell me, oh, it's just the HTML file interface. Mm -hmm. I don't know, because I never use it, because you know, I build VMs, and that's kind of pain extremely yeah, ridiculous. I don't really know how to do It doesn't really run uh, uh, very well, because like, HTML5 is going to a lot of general functionality. Uh, I think to add to like connect VMs to networks, you still have to. You don't have a search box, you just type in the network name and it will be connected to it. So, like, if I want to connect the project to a terminal, I have to type in this file preserve. Flash, PR, HTML5, I have to type in um, project underscore internal underscore zero two. So, it's, it's just snap as a more general HTML5. Are you still working? Yeah. So, it does. There's a lot of questions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a lot of How do I change the language? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I pulled okay, it. Okay, you have to escape to go to command mode? Okay. So you just have to hit escape to get out of whatever you're doing. And then you can move around the air bombs or. Are you, are you done with the GUI? Yeah. I J K H. Are you done with that GUI? No. Okay. We're going to try to do, like, we're going to go to the page and try to do SQL okay. injection. And then are we done? Yep. Okay, just when you're done, I'll try to use the resolution to the graphics. Okay. Did you install VMR tools? I stopped the service. Okay. I was changing the page. I don't know. I don't know. That's why I'm just trying to figure it out. Like, it's a crash thing. Oh, uh, it crashed. It crash. only crash. crashed the GUI. Yeah. yeah. Right? Can you, like, switch to a terminal? I can switch to a virtual terminal, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I just uh, use it. my handy yep. and restart it. Yeah. Well, you don't know, you don't need to tell you on Windows. But you can switch to a virtual terminal. <sighs> you, should, you should really make that repo, and I didn't push that to it. What repo? That's a repo. Okay. <laughs> We have like too many projects to put all in one repo. What do you mean? What do you mean? Really? It'd have to be like an organization, right? Would it? We have the scoring engine, we want to do like mock would, deployments. Would it really stuff. be too many projects to put in one repo? I mean, you don't have to put the scoring engine on, right? What, what would you put there? What? what would you put there? All the scripts, that, like every script we've ever written that's not the scoring engine. Seems like you want to do like an organization, then different repos for like different purposes, right? But there would be at least one repo that's just like tools. I guess. Where's Evan putting that like um, terminal script for presenting? Or has he even put that out yet? I have no idea what script you're talking about. A script he uses to call out to like a server so he can SSH in. Is he just first time? Yeah. He had like he had like I think he was working on like a repo for it though. He was like documenting it and everything, Does making it robust command? or whatever. I don't know. Uh, so we're all good there. Yes. What was the fix again? I was catching. Uh, you have to enable these modules down at the bottom here. Yeah. 
that's done we can install mod security on this so this is going to be the long version of what you might do in like a like an ice age or a cyber force so we're going to apt install gcc apache 2-dev lib xml 2-dev and lib pcre 3-dev and git but i think it's already installed Supposed to be Apache 2 and then Apache 2 dashed up? Or is it? Uh, Apache, we already installed Apache. You can put it in there, but it won't do anything. And everything's broken again. See, it was cycling before. Should I try? Uh, can you W get the repo, please? And then cat that. I'm going to just cat it, curl it. Because I'll do that. That's why. Oops. What is that the is it the capital portal? I can't see that. I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. I think it is, but I can't even see that. Because it's great on the lib XM all dashed up. It's just uh we, we can't repo yet. How did that mine works only while the client is fetching a new web page? So if you go to a new page and while it's trying to go to that page, you can jump over the reverse proxy. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be possible. Okay. Does, it the client Does it work if I curl? No. Well, well. What the heck? That shouldn't happen. Okay. See, I can't. No, that's the captive portal now. Captive portal, right? Yeah. I mean, it's being. And Google is a lie. It's like a user string? I still don't user think agent Google string maybe? Does it? What? Could it be like a user agent string thing? Why? It's only allowing stuff from like an actual Firefox <laughs> session. Wait, 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 wait. You, you want to know what the issue might be, honestly? What's that? No one here off, right? No. no. We're all off under your account. Why? Because no one here off. No. But why would. I don't know. Well, yeah. that's not correct, I guess. Because did you ever off when you were voting to set this? I did, yes. Is it possible that we keep getting reset because we're trying to auth from like six different VMs at the same time? No. That shouldn't that be, be a thing, in right? Incredibly stupid. Well, okay. I'll Does anyone have dot two four eight on their PSNs? <laughs> this would confirm my theory that they use IP address instead of Max for the captain. That. <laughs> um, wait, which 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 are you in mine? I'm in yours, yeah. Okay, I'll check. That would be so, I guess dot seven nine. That's Let me check yours. I don't think that's the case. Why would I do what's, what's your, that? That's your external PSNs, right? Yeah. No, nope, not the same either. What the heck? Okay. So it doesn't work if you use the terminal. I still don't think Google works. I don't know why Google would ever work. Yeah. It's not Why don't I just authenticate? Do you have a script on that? No, but I can do it main. You know, I can't. Uh, I can find it. If you give me a minute, would you like a Slack deal? Actually, I could pull it up inside the client on the Firefox, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. So much to do and so little motivation, right? Wow. What would you expect to happen there? Expect to take Control F and it not to be on the screen. Nope. What the heck? That's not going to. There we go. Just scroll down. Yeah. I need to go back through my GitHub again one more time. Can I try to use the password to edit here? You, you can copy paste it. There's no way you can copy paste that. Oh, but you're already in. Never mind. Yeah. I bet it's going to take the first character. Please, bash gods, make sure you lose the first character when you copy paste it in. 
No, you're good. You're good. You're good. I, 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 I really trust you. <laughs> Am I good, Nick? You are. Is you freeze or froze the projector? That freeze your stream as well? No. It doesn't matter because his password doesn't show up anyway. Because right. I mean, if, if you screwed screw it up, it would show if up. I screwed the script. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It's okay. It's okay, Nick. There's a oh, you know what? That, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the heck happened there? Oh, the, no, he's right. You stream. <laughs> oh, I hit uh, source search by accident. See, Nick, this is just why you trust the script, okay? And then, the, what, what, how, for all you know, there's a three character back door in there, right? Oh, I <laughs> It's not that complicated of a script. Yeah, I know. You know. I don't know, man. There could totally be a back door in that whole five lines. But yeah, that was visible on the stream, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Okay. App update. I can't yeah. see anything, Nick. I'm blind. No, seriously, is it supposed to be showing up over here? Oh, you're on still freeze it, frozen. Oh, it is still frozen. There we go. Okay, apt install. What was it? Well, oh, seriously, that worked? Scroll up. Yeah, it did. Oh, gosh, wow. I think it is like a. It was some for some reason like allowing through anything that came through Firefox or something. Is your mesh on like the user agent string or something? Maybe there's like a cookie. Now there won't be a cookie. We've already had this conversation. It has to be doing it based on MAC address. And it has to be. Yeah. It has to. I mean, you, that's it. Because it allows all traffic through or allows no traffic through. It doesn't matter which uh, what protocol or IP. Or you're using. So well, you can't, it has to be based on MAC address. Or IP. Well, it could be multiple things. But how are these other people offing? Oh, Because they're using the GUI. You're right. Yeah, you user agent string. That's stupid. That's ridiculous. And they sneak it through while they have an active connection. Hmm. Want to know? There's no way it's IP. Simple. You should change it to test it. Yeah. Get an IP and PS and see if it's off again. But I will bet you. I don't know what kind of bet you. Yeah, there's very little I, I actually I can bring to bed. It's not like completely arbitrary. I don't know if this is working. Oh yeah. What should I be doing? Just wait till it go back to the GUI. Read the terminal again. You can try that again. Yeah. I mean, or you can type out exactly that, or you can try to copy that script. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Yeah, don't worry. Let's go through the entire thing. Dash you. I wish it's dash. No, it's dash. Why? Oh, what's that? Dash. That's not copies. No, he's having. He just can't. He doesn't have a connection. He's lost in the European up here. Yeah. Bring that terminal to that one. Don't want to include it. That's not true. Yeah. Yes. Oh, no, your your thing is gone. So your options are, I, I don't know, try to do some finicky thing that'll make it work, or <laughs> go copy the script off the other one. It's GitHub, so slash uh, right from here. Right from here. Uh, I mean, you can go, yeah, if you want to go. So what is it that the GitHub reverse proxy allows us to do? XTOS. Like where you're talking about wanting that for a competition, XTOS. or not wanting it for a shorter competition? Yes, like for a shorter competition, it takes a long time to set up, and um, it basically gives you a single point of failure. So like normally, so what you want to do basically is you have the reverse proxy here, and you have like a bunch of web servers. And then it'll proxy all the connections from your clients. So you have like some client out here on the, in the internet that will come through here. It'll get proxied out to whichever web server you want. So in like a long form competition, you can set up your DNS so that instead of pointing to the web servers, it points to this reverse proxy. You can set up your WAF here, and it'll block all the like red team connections, right? Or most of them anyway. And so what that's good for is you only have to set mod security up on one system instead of three. Or like five, 
Um, you also have all of your log, all of your mod security logs, so all the connections that get dropped, they'll all be on this one system instead of across all the systems they were attacking. And then also, if you want to like edit a rule, so like say you want to remove that one where they only let you use the IP address, so you wouldn't use that in this situation. But if there's some other rule that was like breaking your web service, you only have to remove it on this one system instead of all of them. Okay, so it saves you a bit of time. Okay. So if your virtual box goes down on your web server, you this? Yeah. Exactly. For a short time anyway. Because yeah. uh, like if they're using their D DNS yeah, names yeah, to get in, if this goes down, they won't be able to hit it. SH. But it's, it's pretty simple to just change the records so they go to the right places. Uh, so that'd be a way to fix it really fast, but yeah. you would have some downtime, time, yeah. yeah. And now you have all these different things. Is, 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 so the first part was just straight up installing it, not detriggering anything? Yeah. yeah, basically. Straight up install their configuration. That's like the really fast way to go through it. You'll have like, the rules are like slightly out of date. So it'll be from like 2017 or 2016 or something like that. Um, but that, that's a really fast way to do it. Uh, someone tells me to pause. Try that again. So it should be your username and password as you type right here. I'm not typing your password. So doing the stuff from source gives you the most up-to-date mod security, most up-to-date rules. Because um, if you, you try to use like the community rules set from GitHub with the mod security and the Ubuntu repos or the Debian repos, they'll be out of sync. Yeah, the versions are different, so they'll be using like the rules will be using like keywords that it doesn't understand, and it'll break and it doesn't work. You press enter, right? Or you press kill. I just hit enter. It does not, you're not hopping. Like it, it, it's not like so your friends. Okay. That's what it boils down to. Let me try. It should, it'll, it'll, it'll be significantly shorter than I know, say, like user authentication. It should be like seven lines. Yeah, I couldn't get off. You guys can go ahead and I'll just kind of pay attention. I got to. So now we got all that installed, we're going to enable this module, unique ID. It's one of those finicky ones that oops, mod security will like fail semi-silently when you start or like restart Apache. So yeah, so what a unique ID does is it like basically assigns a unique ID to every request that comes in. So that, mod, that helps mod security like actually um, match on a request and handle them properly. Um, then we're going to download the mod security source. Then we're going to untar it. We're going to CD into that new directory <coughs> and run configure. Oh, yeah. Just take a little bit. Competition, you would like short link this, but what did you say? What, what's after that? After that is uh, untar, so tar is x bf. So I can't standardize flags for any places. That's like the one thing that drives me absolutely bonkers. It's kind of nice. <laughs> What do you mean? Not to have to type the dash. <laughs> Not when every other system, like, all the flags are different. And it, well, what about CHO? Do you like that? You're like, oh, we can't do the lowercase R. It has to be a I don't like R. that, no. <laughs> Standardized pizza. Then after that, we'll CD into the directory and then run <coughs> slash configure. Once you've done that, we'll make. How long does this take to compile? Probably like a minute. Might be worth looking to see if there's, um, but it doesn't. It doesn't know. 
It doesn't do optimizations, and it doesn't like actually test stuff, does it? Do you know? I think it does test stuff. Actually. See, that can be disabled. Hmm. Or extra speeds when compiling. Um, both those things can be disabled, so it should compile a lot faster. Which might be worth it, depending on what systems they handle the competition environment. Maybe. But I wouldn't do this when you're time crunched. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still. Then we'll make install. Okay, so now that that's done, so now those, the, basically the mod security library uh, got put into user local mod security slash lib. So that's our .so file. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy the configs that are in this directory so that Apache has them. So we're going to copy modsecurity.conf recommended to Etsy Apache 2 slash modsecurity.conf. We're also going to copy unicode.mapping to Etsy Apache 2. And once we've done that, we'll uh, CD into Etsy Apache 2. And then we're going to create a uh, module loader in uh, the Apache configs. So that's going to be, you're going to edit mods enabled slash security 2 dot load. Then in this file, you're going to put load module security to underscore module user local mod security slash lib slash mod underscore security to dot so and then you're going to include Etsy Apache 2 mod security dot com so that, that'll tell Apache to load that config file for us Everybody here? No? Okay. Once we've got that done, we can download the community rule set. So we're going to git clone. clone all of the community rules from GitHub. We'll cd into that directory. We'll copy crs-setup.conf to an actual config file. And then we'll cd back out of the directory. Then once we've done that, we'll edit mod security.conf like we did last time. 
We'll set SAC rule engine to on. Add our includes at the bottom. Except our directory is going to be different this time. Done with that, you can restart Apache. And test your configs. There you go, just like that. Anybody need me to like back up to a certain step? So if we come back to the client, we should be able to see that our both of our web servers are now protected. So you go to web server one, or web server two rather. You can try to do command injection. That fails. You can try to go web server three. Okay, SQL injection. We'll see if that fails you. So now we've basically installed a WAF on one server and now we're protecting two servers. So we managed to only have to do this installation once and we got protection for more than one server. Weird stuff you would want to try out. Was oh, that IP change? Oh, um, okay. I'm, I'm working on it right now. Let me this. Make sure the IP change thing. Uh, you go, you go that. So, yeah, that's all we got for today. Unless you want to stick around and try to do uh, weird things to the IA ladders with us. Like get a different IP through DHCP? Uh, uh, it might not. Not probably not. I'm gonna be honest. Probably not. Uh, but you should be taking in that Ranger Lab issues probably, right? <laughs> Unless someone already has it. Yeah, I see no problem with taking out people's IP addresses, right? So it's it's a slash sixteen, isn't it? No, it's not. It's twenty three, I think. Ah, come on. Well, yeah. If you do a new release, you're unlikely, right? You'd have to have Mac Changer. Yeah. But well, you know. that, that's not going to help us with what we want to do, right? Well, it'll give you an IP address. We're trying to differentiate. Oh, yeah, you're right. That would kind of completely break the whole thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, so that's, a, so that's a different IP, right? You're unlikely. I don't okay. remember how to deal with this config. If config, it's the easiest way ever. It's literally if config interface name, IP address, um, then net mask. Yeah. I forget what the range is. Well, I can't remember that. I don't, I don't remember that. Ah, go away. I think I might have found the 
solution. We'll see if it loads. Well, if it does, it's a terrible solution, but I suppose it has to do that. Yeah. I've got to do that mask. Yeah, I know you said the word net mask, and they do that mask. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Right, what's the slash 16? I mean, 23. Just do your bit mask, right? <laughs> <laughs> It's a slash. It's a slash twenty-three. It's only one set of bits, so it wouldn't be. Wouldn't they just make it a two? Uh, wouldn't they just make it a two fifty-four? Two fifty-four, yeah. Yeah. Uh. It's just binary math, right? Who can do that? Make sure I didn't, you know, tell you lies. You can, you know, see that interface. That'd be nice. That's BS. That's well weird. Looks good to me. Exactly. Okay. I don't know what. That's weird. Or did that break the routes? Hmm? Would that break routes? Yeah. Why would that break routes? I don't think it should. It should break routes. Why am I going to Oh, it yeah. Seems like there. Oh, um, unless you jacked it up and put, put down a non valid IP. Sure. Or Palo has even more security features than I thought it did. Be interesting. If we don't give an IP over DHCP, you just can't live anymore. <laughs> that would uh, mess with my ideas to the pro. Yeah, you're broken. Okay. Yep. Odd. What I should have done is just done it through the interface. That doesn't make sense. Oh. I still think it's DHCP you mess up statically. That sh shouldn't matter, right? Yeah, it's just PF sense. Being weird. Um, no. Okay, my fix didn't work. It's, it's okay, I didn't want that to fix anything, right? Oh, what's the actual upstream though? Oh, what's the gateway? Wait, it didn't even ask me for a gateway. What didn't ask for a gateway? PF sense. Why would it ask you for oh, you're right. That doesn't make sense. Um, that should be. That's in the assigned. No, that's not. You know what? That's in the address portion. Yeah, fuck oh, off. Why can't you just. I don't know. Let me reboot it. So many problems. So many problems. What are you talking about? We have all the time in the world. Sure. Oh, that's why they're I do have a report due at midnight then. No, somebody shouldn't be that way. Let's play the game. How did we break the PF sense box? There's no way Palo like actually is smart enough. Sure, it be. Yeah. Or wouldn't that be interesting? It should be in the gateways, right? Gateway. No, well, I don't think so. Right? I think it auto generates it, right? Hell yeah. So are you literally broken now? Yeah. Like, I just have to get a new DHCP address.
and then got it back. Accordingly. Skill six. But if you assign it the right way, right? Yeah. Gateways dot one. Go here. So apparently, what appears to be the fix for um, resizing, they're claiming. I'll double check the. Uh, that that is just uh, open VMware tools doesn't do it. You have to get the official VMware tools, which wasn't installed because I installed the open one when I set up these boxes. It's really you think it'd show you the net mask on your TCP address? Let's try and see what happens. Oh, I didn't change the mask on DHCP servers. No. Oh, sure. Am I supposed to be kind of closed? It's gone. What? Yeah. The gateway did go away. The gateway went away. No, it does make sense the gateway goes away, actually. I mean, it does. Really. Oh, oh yeah. I'm pretty sure that's right. It doesn't make any sense. Oops. Yeah. You like still hit Google. So that means it's Mac, then, right? Wait, wait, wait. Does, what's a PS Does PS one already block private networks? How does that work? It just takes the IP address space for private networks and blocks them. Yeah, but what network space are we on at 172.16? Right now, for, for the IA lab, isn't the whole vehicle the internet on 172.16? Uh, not the internet, but those. So it would be, it'd be if they start from outside, so if they're coming in, right? But would, would it would have blocked the. They'd be established if we're going outbound. Okay, I suppose. It's weird, though. 